Hello, I am Pranay Chinjinwala, a researcher at Alto University. Today, I'm going to present our work on a design pattern for monitoring adapter connections in IC61499. We thank ICIT for giving us this opportunity to present our work. In this work, we propose a mechanism to monitor the connections between various components of a control program during runtime since exhaustive testing of such applications before deployment is not possible. IC61499, a frequently used component-based architecture in the automation industry, defines adapter interface and adapter connection concept, which allows to define the full interface in a single entity. As we can see, numerous components are connected to one another using event lines and data lines. All of these put together create a lot of confusion and a mess. What one line technology or the adapter technology does is combines these event and data inputs into one single line. They can also handle bi-directional communication. That means information from component one and component seven can go through this line and vice versa. That is component seven can send information to component one using this line. Here we see an arbitrary set of N components that are connected to a set of M components using the adapter connections of the 61499 standards. In these connections, we assume that at least one consistency condition will be there. The goal of this work is to have a monitor which will observe all these adapter connections and check if the consistency condition is fulfilled. The adapter connections to be monitored are split into two parts with the designed monitor in between, as we can see here. The monitor will only observe the data and the events that are being transferred. It will not alter any of the information. Upon monitoring, if any of the consistency conditions for the adapters is violated, the monitor will raise a notification or a monitor violation event to a higher level system which can then perform the required countermeasures. Talking about the general implementation of this proposed mechanism, the monitor function block or the sub application is inserted between these adapter connections interacting with one another. Event and data outputs from the monitor can be used to inform users or application about the monitoring results. For example, the monitoring violation condition. Event and data inputs may allow the application to interact with the monitors. For example, trigger the monitor to work, change the condition to be monitored, or handle error conditions. Coming to the deployment of these monitors, the proposed monitoring can be done locally or remotely. Local monitoring would ensure speed and direct interaction with the application, whereas Remote monitoring would reduce the impact of monitoring on the application since all the processing and the analysis can take place on a separate computing device, for example, a cloud. For the first investigation of our proposed mechanism, we have focused on local monitoring, but the same application can be remotely monitored by adding a set of communication function blocks. These communication function blocks will transmit the data to the computing device and they will also be responsible for receiving the feedback generated by the monitoring system. To test the proposed mechanism, we used a hot water tank simulation setup developed in the NXT Studio software. The hot water tank contains two inlets out of which one is slow and one is fast, and the other one is an outlet. The tank also contains a heating element to raise the temperature of the water if needed. The system is also equipped with smart sensors to measure the level or the water temperature. These smart sensors have been enabled with a handshake message verification system and also are capable enough to informing up higher level systems if they are in a state of error or they're not working. The control application has been structured in form of a service oriented architecture where all the sensors communicate with the PID controllers using the adapter connections for the 64099 standard. 
In this work, we will monitor two of these communication setups explained in the upcoming slides. Coming to the first monitor, that is monitoring the handshake mechanism. This monitor is used to check the conditions of the handshake mechanism. If any error or violation in the handshake conditions are noticed, the monitor will notify the HMI about this issue. If we see the composition of the monitor, the input coming, the value and the events are directly connected to the output adapter. The monitor sits on top and just observes what the data coming through. If there is an error in the monitor, it would then notify the HMI about the violation of the handshake mechanism. How the monitor does this? Or let's look at the handshake mechanism. So this handshake mechanism has been was used to verify the messages sent from the smart sensor to the controller. So for example, the smart sensor sends a value XX. It also adds a message sent comma one. As soon as that is received by the controller, it sends back a confirmation called as receive comma one. This confirmation should be received within a predefined timeout period. Otherwise, the handshake mechanism would assume that the message hasn't reached and it would resend the value. If we look here, it sends value AA with command send comma one and starts a 10 millisecond delay. Within the delay, it did not receive a confirmation. So it resends the same value, but with the updated message ID. This process continues until it receives the confirmation with the latest message ID. In this case, receive comma three was achieved within the 10 millisecond timeout period. Hence, it sends the updated value BB with the fresh ID sent comma one. How do we monitor this? We have a pre, we have a defined state machine. Now, as soon as the value is sent from the smart sensor to the controller, the monitor picks up the value. Once it picks up the value, checks the value. It checks if it's a new value or the old value. And if it's an old value, it checks what message ID should be there. Should it be one or should it not be one? Because it's an old value, it will not be one. If it's a new value, it's, it's one. This is how it checks the incoming message. If it finds an error, it comes to the state error in which the HMI is notified. Now, if there's no error, the controller would anyways get the value. Now, since there's no error, the monitor would expect receive comma one. So once the controller sends receive comma one and it, act, it goes through the monitor, because it satisfies the cons consistency condition, there is no event raised. Looking at case two, we send value BB and send comma one. Now the monitor would expect to receive receive comma one from the controller, but the controller sends receive comma two. In this case, the monitor will raise a violation because receive comma two is received and not receive comma one. Even though the violation is raised, it does not stop the process from working. The smart sensor still sends the other values and the user takes care of the violation. Coming to our second monitor, monitoring subsystems. A monitor was designed to analyze various subsystems and then based on the observations, command a set of further subsystems to perform the desired operations. We used two smart sensors in the water process tank acting as two subsystems to be monitored. That is the level sensor one and level sensor two, which were then commanding the average FB to use either both of the sensor or one of the sensors based on the monitoring. Here we can see the composition for monitor two. Information from each sensor is directly passed ahead without any modifications. What the monitor does is takes the inputs and monitors the condition and then sends a value to the average FB. What it monitors can be seen in the state machine. It checks for sensor errors. So like we said before, the smart sensors are capable enough to inform if they're in a state of error. So if none of the sensors are in error, the monitor basically runs in mode three, which is using the average of both the sensor values. If sensor two is in error and sensor one works fine, it would then tell the average FB to just use values from sensor one and not from sensor two because 
sensor two is in error. Same case with sensor two. If sensor one is in error and sensor two is not in error, then the average FB will be told to use values from the sensor two only. Coming to the conclusions, we proposed a pattern for monitoring, a new design pattern, which was then tested successfully using the hot water tank examples. Now, after that, we are investigating powerful monitoring specifications to handle larger systems. Thank you.